So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 13. Today is August the 4th, 2022. The um, kind of the, the, the topic for this evening, the, the play shop for this evening is really talking about how to grow our sixth sense. Because last week we were talking about what a sixth sense is, or the different kind of um, clairs that we, the, the, what the clairs are, like clair, clairvoyant, clairaudient, and all of those different different ways that our sixth sense can um, come in. So we talked also a little bit about um, what are some of the, the reason why our sixth sense are not actually uh, stronger. Why are we not all psychics? Because our sixth sense is actually very natural to us. It's, it's not something that is weird or only special people can get them. Actually, everyone has it. Every little baby, every kid actually has all of, of these natural senses. And it's just that um, as we grow older, and because we live in a society where everything is like we we stress on being able to see, being able to touch something. So we there is this this um, kind of prejudice to things that we can't see. We don't think that things we can't see they're not there, and only things that we can actually see with our eyes, and everyone else can see it. And if we can touch it and everyone else can touch it, then that, then then it's real. Otherwise, if only one person can see it, then you know that there's something wrong with that person. Um, or I remember <clears throat> for um, for um, Chinese people, I was told that you only see ghosts when you are um, when you have bad luck, like when your energy is really low. So, so that's kind of that stigma that if you see something that you, you don't normally see, then it's a bad thing. So all of these beliefs, all of the different traumas actually um, discouraged us, discouraged most people to keep those six senses. And this, this play show, I want to actually focus on um, things that we can do in order to grow our six senses. So the first thing I want to talk about is that, um, let's see. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is actually just go over the, um, oops, go over the, what are we going to talk about? tonight, the agenda. So as always, we can do a welcome and check-in. We have a presence meditation. And then when I start to talk, in, uh, talk about how to grow our sixth sense, I want to really talk about um, the connection between spirit and body. Because this is really about when we're talking about growing our sixth sense, it's really about how the, the spirit and the body work together. So this connection is, is important. So I want to have a um, discussion about the spirit and the body connection first, before I dive into it. And then there are, and then I start to talk about ways that we can start to reclaim our abilities. So these six cents are really our natural abilities. It is just because we were um, conditioned as a society in the past not to um, not to develop these abilities. Now what can we do in order to reclaim these abilities and also ways that we can play with it because we learn by playing. So when we play with something, we're actually learning as well. So that is the agenda for this evening. So first, I just want to do the check-in. So again, 
any questions about what Sixth Sense and also any comments, questions about um, what, what we've talked about last week or anything else from previous. I just want to open the floor for any comments or questions. If there are no questions or comments, then let's just go ahead to do the presence meditation. So let's just start by taking in a deep breath. And let it all go slowly. As you breathe in again, just slowly and intentionally breathe in. And with the breathing in, also have the intention that you want to bring back all of your energy inside you. And when you can breathe in no more, then just slowly release your breath. And then do it one more time, breathing in slowly with the intention of bringing back all of your energy, attention back inside you, within yourself. And when you can breathe in no more, then start to breathe out. And as you breathe out, imagine that you're letting go of anything that does not support you in this moment. And then continue to do this breathing in slowly and breathing out slowly with the same intention of when you're breathing in is to bring back your attention, your energy towards you. And as you breathe out, breathe out anything that does not support you in this moment. And as you are bringing back and your energy and your attention. Also have the intention that you want to bring back all parts of yourself. Bring back all parts of your ener energetic self towards you. And as you breathe out, let go of anything that does not support you in this moment and allow your body to become relaxed. When you feel your body is starting to become more relaxed, then also set the intention that you want to be connected with the highest vibration version of you in this moment. The highest version of you beyond space time, you want it to be connected with that version of you. Bring that connection in to yourself. And whatever it is that is in the way of that, that is taking you, it's interfering with that connection. Let it go as you breathe out. And when you've done that, then come all the way back into the room. And welcome back. So the first thing I want to go to talk about now is really the spirit mind connection. Spirit body, the spirit body connection, sorry. It's really the spirit body connection. So what do I mean by that? The spirit body connection. I've mentioned a couple of times um, in previous 
podcast play shops have mentioned that we there are different components that make up us. So there is our mind, then there is our body, and then there is our soul or spirit. So so there are three parts of us. And um, I just specifically want to talk, focus really on the body and the, the, the connection between the spirit and the body. <clears throat> um, because we have lived in a, um, like for the longest time, we've been very body focused or, or at least our society has been very body focused. That's why we name our body, we put clothes on our body and we have houses. We live in, in rooms, houses, condos or whatever that really is to protect the body. So there's a lot of emphasis on our body. And for the longest time, we seem to believe that like, even, after, even though we know that, or at some point we start to suspect, we know that we, there's actually, we're more than our body. But we still think that the soul, the spirit, is actually in the body. But I want to um, talk that it's actually the other way around. Is that our body is in is in our spirit or soul? Um, what is the difference between soul and spirit? Spirit is really our essence, whereas soul is kind of connected to this life stream, connected to a particular um, time space, whereas our spirit, the essence, our essence is beyond time and space. So that's, for me, that's the difference between the soul and the spirit, is that um, there is the spirit, which is our essence, and then the soul is really that smaller part smaller circle within the spirit that really is to um, be focused on what is happening to our body and what is what are we experiencing in the here and now in this reality so our body though actually exists within our soul within our spirit within the etheric parts of us, not the other way around. Even though um, there is, I would say that there is a part of the soul that actually um, comes inside the body because without a, a connection to the soul, without just a connection to the soul, the body is simply a, a like a, a suit. It's, simply, it's just like a piece of clothing. Um, there are actually, what is the difference between a clone and, um, and a living human being? A clone is really just the, just to take a, a bit of DNA from the, from the body and to grow a body. That's just the, the, the grown body may look exactly like, for example, if I have a clone, my clone may look exactly like me. However, the clone does not have a soul connection. And the only way that a clone can become um, considered a, a, a person, a, a human being, is if a part of the soul also inhabits that and starts to connect with that, that body, then it, is, it becomes a real human being. Otherwise, it's just a hunk of meat. It's just a suit. It is just, just like a, a piece of clothing. So our body exists within now. So, and why is that important? It's important because you can think of the, the body as being the antenna of the soul because the body is actually what ex, what ex, what gives us the experience within this reality that we are playing in on earth in this moment 
the reason why I can have experiences is because I have a body. And when I don't have a body, then I don't have that experience anymore. I may still be able to observe things, but I would not be able to really experience what something um, tastes like. For example, if I, if I were spirit, you're trying to explain to me what um, sweetness tastes like. I would have no idea whatsoever. Like you can, you can be the most um, brilliant with words, um, with describing things, but because I really don't have that um, shared experiences of what can, what the, what sweetness actually tastes like, feels like no matter how much you try to explain to me, I would not be able to understand what that is as a spirit. That's why we have a body, because our body, we as a body, we would be able to have experiences. And because our body is, um, while we are on earth, while on earth, everybody on earth, that is considered a human being would have a similar kind of makeup of body. There may be different shapes or color. There may be some difference, but how we experience things like sweetness, sourness, um, saltiness, those are the, the senses that we can share with everyone else that has a similar um, that has a similar <clears throat> kind of body that can have that experience so that's why the first thing that we can do in order to grow our sixth sense is actually to take care of the body to really um, make sure our body is healthy and to also make sure that our body is, is um, relatively clean, as in not a lot of toxins. Uh, and also, um, it's not in pain. And if we're in pain, is to actually do our best to heal our body. Because if you're trying to develop your six senses, and you have pain in the body or you have um, a lot of toxins that is making your body um, feel ill, you really don't, you're not in the best state of mind in order to decipher what your sixth sense is giving you. I have this analogy that it is like the the body is like this, um, <clears throat> for example, there is a, an invention in, I've seen in, an invention in Africa where they can actually um, use, put some water in a, a bottle and then put a very small light, but a light within, uh, dip in the water. And the water, it's kind of like the, it amplifies the brightness of that small light and it actually shines out. So that is kind of what it's like for our body is that we, the clearer it is, our body is, the, the easier it is for our body to receive these subtle energy and be able to translate that subtle energy into the information that that energy is trying to tell us whereas if you if your body has a lot of pain in it and you have a lot of toxin it's as though you're trying to put a light in muddied water the light just cannot shine out the information that's coming in, it's subtle energy. The, the universe is always trying to communicate with you through this subtle energy. 
but because if your body is not healthy, has a lot of toxin or you have a lot of pain, is that your body is not in the best shape, the best state of mind in order to be able to get the information, receive that information through the subtle energy and be able to translate it into um, information that you can use. So that is one thing I wanted to um, talk about. The other thing is also, <clears throat> is that, um, i go back to what I mentioned earlier, is that our body is kind of like the antenna. So when you have the antenna is aligned. So when your body is aligned, when your energy centers are aligned, when you don't have a lot of conflicting beliefs, conflicting um, you know, um, when your body and your mind is kind of in like in in the same as aligned, when your body, mind, spirit is aligned you would be able to receive information much easier and be able to know the meaning of that information much easier. But if your energy centers are all completely out of alignment and your mind is thinking one thing, your body is trying to do something else, if you're not in alignment, then it is kind of tough for you to make sense of what energy means, let alone grow your sixth sense. So one of the things that you can do, which I'm gonna do with you right now, is really to um, align your body. So how do we do that? Very simple. First thing is um, align your mind first. So then just kind of, Take a deep breath in. And relax your body as much as possible. The more your body is relaxed, the easier it is for you to align everything. So relax your body. Just breathe in and out a couple of times, just bring yourself back into a peaceful, calm state. And it just set the intention is mind coherence activate. Oh, I should say brain coherence activate. And by doing this, then all the parts of your brain will start to work together in coherence. So just repeat this command internally for a few more times. Brain coherence activate. When you feel that your mind and all your brain is coming together, and the way I feel it is I can feel that there is this um, right on top of my head. It's kind of where the brain is. I can feel that it's coming together and there is a kind of a weight to it. That's how I feel it when my brain is coherent. And once you feel that your brain is coherent, then work with your heart. Heart coherence, activate. And repeat that internally for a few more times. Heart coherence activate.
And again, I feel that my heart is more solid. So it's a little bit like when, um, when you're standing in attention, as in, you know, trying to uh, salute somebody, when you're like a soldier, you're standing in attention. And that is what it feels like is all of a sudden my, my heart just seem to come together. So that's how I know that my heart is coherent. And then the third thing is gut coherence. Gut coherence activate. Brain, heart, and gut coherence activate. Brain, heart, and gut coherence activate. I feel it as a column of energy that's kind of running straight within my body, connecting the gut, the heart, and my brain area. So when I feel that column of energy within me, then I, that's how I know that it is working. So that is how you bring your body back into alignment. Okay, so any questions so far? Did any did everybody manage to feel the difference between um, your being in coherence or not? So far, so good. Yeah, I think so. Okay, great. Thank you for letting me know. Good. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm glad. So it it does not take long. It's just you just need to. Um, just take a couple of minutes to align yourself. When you align, then the next part. Let's go on the next part. So now that we know the spirit and body connection, <clears throat> the next is really to reclaim our abilities. I've got talked a couple of times is that <clears throat> um, we're all born with six cents. If you notice me, you're <clears throat> a baby. I think I need some water. If you notice a, um, a baby is that they... They are very sensitive to what's going on. They're sensitive to energy. They're sensitive. So when you're in a good mood, they know before you even say anything, you can as you just um, be close to them and they will really know what's going on because their sixth sense is full on. So babies are born with that. And I think... It, the young child of um, like three, maybe even up to five years old, they they are usually, well, well probably two to three years old, they, they're still pretty good depending on their environment or if they have any um, adults around that's really discouraging them. But most of the time, um, young kids, their sixth sense is full on. And if a young kid tells you they don't like someone, you trust them. You trust what they they tell you. 
because they their sixth sense is on. So they may say that, oh, um, somebody like a, a good friend or even grandpa, I don't like grandpa when he is uh, doing what, or grandma when, when in certain cases, because they, um, their sixth sense is so keen at that young age that they pick up on these things and they, they know exactly what is good and what's bad. That's part of our survival um, mechanism is to be able to read energy because when you are when you have the small body, you um, you need this the sixth sense to make sure that you um, can can be safe for longer periods of time. So that's why sixth sense is really something that is natural to us. It is only as we get older, and that's when we start to be um, socialized out of this natural ability. So now that's why we need to reclaim it. And because we have so much conditioning to not, um, to kind of not pay attention to energy to pay attention to appearance rather than energy. We have so much condition to look at um, our appearance. For example, we are always, there's so much advertisement that tells us, oh, we need to buy this, you know, to look good, to look like you um, are pretty or to look like you have money, to, to look like you are hip, to look like you are, whatever it is that appeals to you is, is the look. You need to have that look. So a lot of emphasis on appearance. And um, so, but when we try to develop a sixth sense, it is really appearance that is interfering with how we can get the attention. So one of the ways, one of the first way that is very effective in helping us to grow our sixth sense is really to claim it. So that's why I kind of have um, come up with a bunch of a field. Well, is, is, these are, these are, I would call it mantras or just, well, they are a little too long for mantras, but I would say that they are, these are sentences, these are statements that, so what do I suggest you to do to reclaim your abilities is to really set a timer for yourself. Let's say if for each day, give yourself five minutes. Give yourself five minutes with a timer. Just set your cell phone or alarm or however, um, whatever kind of timer that you want to use. Set a timer for a few minutes. And what you do is actually pick one of these or come up with something that resonates with you. So what I've, so the first one is, I am open to be shown hidden information beyond my awareness that is in the way of growing my sixth sense. So that's one thing to, that, that's one statement to, to um, when you say the statement. So at the beginning is to say the statement and then give yourself five minutes at a time. So each day, give yourself five minutes. So, because once you declare something, your mind will start to look for these things, these hidden information that you are not aware of consciously and it will bring it up to you to assist you in finding out what it is and that is kind of stopping you or at least limiting you in growing your sixth sense. So when you give your, when you say this sentence, 
and then give yourself some time to hear and listen to that, the answers. And then you will start to understand what it is that's in your way. Or you can come up with another one. I have another one here that says, I'm open to receive information from subtle energy beyond what my five senses can tell me. And the other one more that I came up with is, I'm open to be, or, or sorry, or I am open to receive. So without the, I'm open to receive information outside of time, space, and space time that is for my highest good to know. So this one is really to download information that is, um, it's outside of time, space, and space time, meaning that it can be information that is in the past or in the future. That So the space time is because the space is here on earth, but these information may be from you, a version of you that is not on earth, but is still relevant for you. And it's good for you to know in this moment. So that's um, what I have designed this statement for. And you can actually come up with any combination come up with any uh, a statement with any combination for example if you want to um let's say clear tangent is being able to touch something and get information about the owner of that that um piece of um tool or or that piece of object then you can have a statement that says um, i want to have access to, I want to be open to um, information with that is beyond the, the touch of my fingers, for example, something like that. So depending on what it is that you want to do, what it is, what kind of um, clear senses, sixth sense, or what kind of abilities that you actually want is to create a statement and give yourself some time so that you can just say the sentence and allow your body to digest what it is that you want. Because when you declare something, or even if you don't say it out loud, even if you just say something within your, yourself, you, your body still um, process it. I remember one of the, the most, I would say the, one of the, the best thing I ever done to grow my, my sixth sense is, is to actually, this, this one statement is that I am spirit having a human experience. Because before that, I always thought that I am a human being having a spiritual experience. So at some point, I think maybe 20 years before, I actually have that. So I'm, a human, I'm a human being. I am this body. I'm a human being. And occasionally, I have these spiritual experiences that really um, blows my mind out for the longest time. And then I kind of adopted something. I, I heard something that we actually spirit having a human experience. And I adopted that. And I actually, in my um, meditation, I repeat that to myself as I am spirit having a human experience. And, and it is because of that, because I say that statement and to myself and I really subscribe to it and I really um, trying to feel and make that sentence real for myself that at some point um, I really got to the point where I 
know that I am the spirit. And that actually allows me to grow so much more in consciousness. So it's something that is very simple, is to just um, come up with a sentence, a statement, or a mantra, which is the shorter sentence that you can repeat to yourself over and over again, and just give yourself five minutes, or maybe if you don't have five minutes, just three minutes a day to just give yourself that time to consider that statement and allow your body to process it and to make it real within. So that is one way that you, we all can do to grow our sixth sense. So any questions so far? Comments? So this is really interesting. <clears throat> um, I think you started this last week when we were talking about the different players. And so I have been asking myself, I'm open to seeing energy or things that I haven't been able to see in the past. And just today, synchronicity, of course, <laughs> when I was doing my meditation this morning, <clears throat> um, I um, have my hand kind of divided into two hands and my wedding rings moved on to other fingers of mine. And within my diamond, I saw all of these beautiful, um, like basically all the colors of the chakras. And it was like, wow, that's amazing. That's so cool. And then I was like, wow, that must be a sign. And then just before this um, talk tonight, I was making my dinner and I was making rice and I used a different pot and it had bubbles on the inside, you know, that kind of bubbled up to the top. And the bubbles had the same colors all throughout the bubbles. It was the same chakra <laughs> colors. It was like so cool. I was like, wow, look at that. That's awesome. Oh <laughs> Not God. sure exactly what it means, other than <laughs> that's really cool and really colorful, but it's, yeah. It's amazing how when you ask for something. Oh, wow. It is. Thank you for sharing. This is it. It really works. It's um, something so simple by just telling ourselves, just giving ourselves this permission, just claiming that. This, it's, it's so important to just claim whatever it is that you actually want to, de to develop is to just, don't just think about it, but give yourself this time and to just say it to yourself and claim it and allow your body to process it because that's what your body do. Your body allows you to experience. So when you actually tell your body, this is what I want to experience, you claim that experience, your body will do whatever it can to make it happen. So thank you for sharing. It is very encouraging. Now you mm -hmm. can... <laughs> now you can ask for all the other things that you <laughs> want to experience now. You, mm. you know, it's just, it's a beginning. It's a beginning. Yeah. So imagine what other um, practical things that you be able to do. Yeah, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, am I going to ask... Uh, my spirit essence rather than my soul for information S since my my soul is only limited to this lifetime but spirit essence is limit is is sort of all lifetimes and all um has more breadth or depth or expansion would I ask guidance from my spirit essence or would I ask guidance from spirit guides or who am I going to ask, ask guidance from? <laughs> um, your soul actually have experience, um, have access to information that is on earth. 
So all the information of the previous lifetimes that you have had on Earth. And also oh. it has access to your lineage because that's all Earth. But if you want to have experiences that is on like outside of Earth and then um, like to ask to ask that from your essence. So because your essence is really like the higher, um, I would say is really more of your um, higher essence where it has information that is not even like that's even beyond earth experience. That's my understanding is that earth is anything that you like all of your experiences, your soul would have that. Okay. But if you want to um, know more about, let's say, your um, previous lifetime, which may be on Mars, who knows, or Jupiter, then okay. I would go with um, the essence. And okay. another for, thing. For regular day to day, it's kind of like soul for regular emotions and regular human stuff and that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so would be good enough. <laughs> I, would, good uh, me. I would I would actually um start with the soul. Start with okay. the soul. Because okay. start with the soul. And and when you have and then go up, grow. Because okay. that's that's really what we're doing is to grow our um, sixth sense. Is because there may be some experiences that you had on a different planet that may be relevant for whatever it is, because Earth is changing. Right. And we are actually shifting our energy. So those other experiences, maybe in this moment, the Earth um, experience is still fairly close to what we had before. However, you know, who knows in a couple of years time when the um earth the, the the energies and what's possible on earth is beyond whatever it is that we have have had experience from past life then it may be good to actually bring in lifetimes where we are not on earth i have a second question yeah are there, are there angels are people angels Mm -hmm. Yes and no. There, because our essence is so big that, okay, the, the way I want to answer you is what is an angel? <clears throat> what is an angel? It really actually, um, an angel in one way is that is a being that has um, so it's so far above in terms of vibration that someone on earth when they see that entity their experience cannot really translate that energy and so the the best way that they can translate that energy is an angel for example, you know, there are there angels oh, okay. that, that looks like a, a burning bush, for example. It is not because it is a bush that is burning. It's just because that the closest, um, the most relevant way that our understanding and, and senses can translate that energy to, because the energy is so high of vibration to, is a burning bush. Okay, so it's, that's and an angel is really a very high vibration entity. And can a person be an angel? Absolutely, because our highest vibration essence of us is or can be that high. So, yes. So, could there be angels that come to earth and live in human form yep yes okay 
Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's kind of like rare or not, not common. I don't know. Okay. Um, is it common? Um, I, I don't know. Okay. I do know, I do know that there are those, um, especially now, especially because earth is going through this shift. That's why there are more high vibrational beings that is incarnating on earth. So right. we, we actually, um, we actually do know, I actually do know, because I, I, I don't remember if you all recall that Kimberly is really an angel, like her is an angel. That's what I understood, yeah. Yeah, so that. yes, we know, we know one. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely possible. Huh. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And what about if they come in butterflies, like, is that like a soul? When sometimes people feel like their loved one who's gone from you know form of a butterfly. Yeah, it is. It, it that, that's that the soul. Is, yeah, that is. It can be. It can be. Is is that um, why? Because um, it really depends on that the person that has passed over. Because the person yeah. that has passed over, if they really love butterfly, then mm. like when they are around, then um, it's possible that you may see butterfly, a butterfly instead of the person's, mm. that the person's shape, a uh, human form is you may see a butterfly. It usually is something like that. Or it be, you may be able to see that um, essence as, you may be able to feel it as a, a scent. Because sometimes maybe um, one of a, a, a loved ones that has passed away, if they like to wear a particular kind of um, a scent, like a and perfume yeah. or, or some sort of a scent, then yeah. when you smell that, yeah. That yeah, you smell be. the flowers and like, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know one of my... My guides has a particular scent. So every time I smell that, I know, oh, okay, wow. somebody's around. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yes, absolutely. Wow. That can help. Wow. Any other questions, comment? Okay, great. So let's move on then. So the next thing. <clears throat> uh, can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Yes, go ahead. So I can ask um, whatever I want to, you know, create, whatever, like any wish I can, you know, saying and my body going to do that. Yes. Anything I want. Anything you want, provided, like from provided that is like you, so you have to align with your body. You have to align with your body. So make sure your body is in, in alignment and then you repeat that. So first uh, brain, heart and gut coherence activate, right? First yeah. separately and then together. And then I repeat, like yeah. I want my hands feel what, changes I need to do on people's faces. Yes. It's going to work. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's exciting. It is. It is. You can. So, so the, uh, it is, it is really to, because um, that is how powerful you are. We all are powerful. So, so it is really that we have, we seem to have um, a body that does its own thing and we don't know what's happening in the body, but you know, in this energy, it's coming around is that we are starting to really partner with the body 
and understand that we are mind, body, spirit. So it's not that we have a body and we have a spirit and we don't, like the, the two are not um, compatible. Or you think that the spirit is great, the body is, um, is, is sturdy or whatever um, things, like your body is not enough or that kind of stuff. So it is really about creating that alignment with your body. I've seen that one Russian institution, she's from St. Petersburg, and uh, she said that um, she's channeling, and ex she's doing exactly what I dream about. She channeling what to do with a client, and like she see in her mind all kind of moves, what she has to do with a, uh, you know, with a woman face to get the best result. And it's amazing what she like all create. She can do it. That means you can do it too. Yeah. So That's you simply have to give you. yourself the mission to be able to do that. Okay. So give yourself the mission that you can do that as well and better. So. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Watch out, world. <laughs> oh, we have super aesthetician, Tatiana. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Let's, if there are no more other questions, then we can move on. So the next thing is how to grow. So other ways of growing is really to play, play, play. Okay, play with it. Make it a game. So if you think that, oh, this is, this is hard, I am going to, you know, be diligent and I'm going to study hard. I'm going to, you know, make sure I pray and, and do these um, mantras every day at 10 a.m. And, you know, if you're so serious about it, it actually may backfire. So the other way is to, one more thing is to actually play because we learn best. We grow best when we are playing. It is really when we are playing um, that we can make faster pro uh, progress faster. So what do I mean by play? Literally is to just everything in your life, you make it um, part of the game. For example, when I first to, to grow my own sixth sense, I, you know, for example, is let's say somebody um, like I, I, I order something from, um, from Walmart, for example. If I order something from, from Walmart, I would, so once I put in the order, they usually tell me that it takes maybe five to seven days. Then, so I play it again is, you no, know, I would tap in and say, when do I think it's going to come? And I would just you know, ask the question, when do I think it's going to come? And I mean, get an answer. Okay, is so it going to come, you know, such and such a day, maybe in three days or maybe in 10 days. So whatever it is, make it a game. Is to just, well, when you get the answer, is to just, like if, you, if you're forgetful, just write it down. Or if you have a good memory, just remember, okay, this, this is what I uh, got at the moment. This is, this is what's, um, when it's going to come. And then, um, so then you wait and see, are you right or are you wrong? And you do this in everything. For example, <clears throat> I think a lot of the times, oh, okay, most recently is I try to, I have this app, this um, bus app. The you know, TDC app that would tell me when the bus is coming. Sometimes though it glitches. Sometimes it glitches, and it would it would say it's not going to come for another ten minutes. But I would have this 
um, inkling that, oh, I better, you know, be out there on, at the bus stop and ready a little earlier. So when I think something like that, <laughs> I would do it because it is really, by now I know that I'm tapping into something like even though the, the TDC app may tell me one thing, but I my inner knowing know that something else. So then um I would I would do that. Do I get it right all the time? No, absolutely not. I may get it right in I don't know 50% of the time at first. But the thing is, if you don't um if you don't if you're not hard on yourself, if you just think of it as being play, okay, 50% of the time is, that's pretty good already. So you start to, the more you play though, you, you will notice that you will get better and better at it because it's, the sixth sense is a muscle. The more you use it, the better it gets. And also the energy is ramping up. It's getting higher and higher so that um, even if you do nothing, your sixth sense will grow because that's what the energy is. So um, energy is really when the energy, the fre frequency vibration is higher, every um, inch of space is now packed with much more information. The higher frequency simply means more information. So the only thing that is slowing us down is really how our body can translate that because our body has been so lazy and um, so dense for such a long time. And now the energy is, com is constantly bombarding our body. So well, that's why the first thing I said is to really treat your body well. So when you treat your body well, you, you make sure your body is healthy and clean, and you drink water, hydrate yourself, and um, exercise, uh, make sure that your body is functioning, then your body has, it will um, actually naturally increase its ability to be able to receive information in, uh, receive all these vibration in and be able to get more information out. So play, play, and without any expectation. So make sure you play, 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 and make everything um, a play. For example, how you can play is you, um, one of the ways that I can play is I want to talk to somebody, but Instead of actually, you know, texting them over the phone, is I actually sent a mental, kind of a mental message to them. Okay, I send a message to them. Okay, call me. I play this game with um, Lucy a fair bit because I know like she is a pretty sensitive person. So, I would play that, you know? so instead of actually texting her, I would just say, okay, text me or call me, you know, or so those things. So send and so instead of actually doing something is to just play, send a message, a mental message, use your sixth sense, send a message to someone else and then wait and see how long it takes for that to actually have the, the message be delivered. Because um, I, I remember <clears throat> when I was um, learning Huna, um, I was told that there, there's actually um, in those days in Hawaii, because of the, the Hawaiian, the Hawaii has several islands. So the, um, the, the elders in different islands, they, in back in the days, they don't have telephone, they don't have cell phone. Instead of using smoke signal or things like that, is they actually, for the shamans, they, they actually telepathically send messages. They will be able to really um, talk to one another just by that. 
of course, they are shamans, they have lots of, of training. However, we can do that too. You just have to start using that message. <clears throat> and <laughs> um, I actually, I remember one time um, somebody told me it's he, so, so the, the reason why I know it can be done and there are people that uh, has done it is because one time, um, I, I won't name any names, but one of my friends, I have two friends. Um, one of them is a very powerful energy worker, let's say. And the other one is powerful, yeah, yes, but not as powerful as the other. So one of the, 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 the complaints from, so let's say A is the really powerful one and the B is the less one. So B actually complained to me that all of a sudden B have the feeling that, oh, I want to send A some money. I don't know why, but I just want to send A some money. And so she, um, so B actually did send A some money. And actually, it, it, the A, B have this, you know, okay, this, this um, kind of question in her mind. How come she's thinking of sending money to A? You know, you know they, they, there's no reason why A didn't ask for it, but. And so, so B was talking, was asked, actually asking uh, Franco about it. And Franco actually confirmed, oh, A actually sent you a message to send for money, that's why. So actually it can be like that. I'm not suggesting that we all go and use that to you know, get money, but I'm just saying that it works. And um, it's not a very ethical, way of doing it uh, however stay to the the ethical use of this because your sixth sense really gives you a power and with power just be responsible because this energy now um whatever goes around comes around as well so Make sure that you are using your sixth sense in, a, in an ethical matter, in a win-win situation, okay? So, Can I ask you a question? Yes, go ahead. What if that person who I gonna send the message, what if they not spiritual at all? It's still gonna work? Yes, it's still gonna work. They would not know what hit them, but it's still going to work. For example, some person promised me for a long time something, but never do that. Can I ask him to do that? Yep. They no, I said I'm going to try. They would have this feeling that they would want to do it. They would have this feeling that they would want to do it. And they would not understand why. Why they would they want to do it? So that is, and when somebody is sensitive, then yeah, they actually can pick it up even um, easier, faster. Okay, so I actually um, came up with a, an exercise that we can do. So come up with, so the next one is actually, let's play a game. Okay, this game, this is a, a game that you can use this game or you can um, come up with your own game. Yes. Pick a few things. I picked here the four elements. You can pick four pictures or you can pick four different shapes or even 10 different shapes. It's up to you. But the, the, the thing to remember is to pick things that are really very different. 
So the four elements, um, each of the for four elements is very specific. So air is like um, really you know, airy. Earth is more of a grounding and, and also more um, solid feel to it. And water is just flowing feel and there's a wet feel to it. And fire is different from anything else. It has a heat. It, has, um, it also has a, um, a sensation as well. So that's why I picked the four elements because it's very different. So I wanna play a game with, with um, all of you. So the game is, and, and I want to actually give you some um, ways to increase the, the I would say the, the probability of being able to get it right is I'm gonna just pick one element and I'm gonna focus on it and send that, the energy of that element to all of you here. And I want you to pick um, which one it is that I'm actually sending out to you. Okay, so um, the, the, the way that you can grow the probability of you being able to get it right is to really ask yourself this question. Two, well, actually, two things. First thing is to notice how you are. Let's say if you're very hot now, then you have to ask. So if you feel hot, let's say, is it because I am hot or is it because of me or is it because the message coming in the, or the energy coming in is fire? So you have to ask yourself this question. Is it mine or is it really the, the target that I'm trying that I'm trying to tune into? Okay, and also the other thing is to, because you know that there are only four possibilities, then ask yourself, does this energy that, you know, when you will be sending me, does it feel like airy, is there a breeze, is it light, or does it feel heavy like water, or does, oh, sorry, or does it feel heavy like earth, or does it feel flowing like water, or is it fire? feels hot and transformative. So, because there are only four. So just ask yourself, which one it is that it is? Which one does it feel like? So you guys ready to play? Yes. Okay, great. So I am going to just pick one of it now. And I'm going to send it all to you. Okay. I feel fire. It was in my head. It was in your head. Okay. So I actually picked earth. So I thought horse, but <laughs> I feel fire in, in my head. And just a minute ago, I didn't have that feeling. That's why. Okay. But before you even choose it, I somehow I thought you're going to use Course, but then I feel that temperature changing. Ah, okay, great. Good noticing. You oh. picked, you, I felt air. You oh, picked earth way before. You picked earth way before you even explained it to us. <laughs> earth was already picked. <laughs> oh. well, good. Uh, well, actually, um, it, so, so a couple things I want to um, say. First is doesn't matter whether you get it right or wrong because if you do yeah. if you play this enough, then you will notice that your chance of getting right 
getting it right will start to get better and better. So practice, play, play, play. So it's a muscle. The two thing is whether you get it right or wrong, it doesn't matter. It's a game, remember. So you are trying to exercise this muscle. So treat it as a game. And third thing I want to mention is trust the first thing that comes to your mind because that is really the sixth sense. Okay, trust the first thing that comes to your mind. But usually when I second guess myself, that's when I get it wrong. So that's, that's what I notice about the sixth sense. It's the first thing that comes is usually the right answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I share something? Absolutely. So it's really interesting. You put those images up and for whatever reason, the fire like totally grabbed my attention. And so mm -hmm. I kept saying clear, 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 like see what I could come up with. And then when you actually chose, I actually could feel a little bit of heaviness. So it's interesting because I wanted to say fire, like you said, Tatiana, and then it was, and then somehow I just had this feeling of heaviness. So it's interesting how you mm -hmm. both kind of came up for me as well. Okay, thank you very much for sharing. Yeah, great. Okay, well, that, that, that's, isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah, it is fun. So I actually suggest that you um, you come up with your own game. And so only a, a few things that you need to do in this to make it fun. And also have, make it so that there is some way that you can check the what is the right answer. So it, it could be that like you can set it up with that's playing this with someone else, like what we're playing is, is you have one person that's doing the picking and the other person is trying to, to pick it. Or if you are just doing it on your own, it's actually just make a couple of envelopes and you just um, put in random images. So, so that's how you can, you can do that. Okay, I so was trying uh, when I was picking up my friend from the airport, and he told me once that uh, he's waiting for the baggage. You know, it was taking so long. And uh, last time when I was at the airport waiting at the terminal outside, <clears throat> I just chose wherever I got spot, spot and I stood there. And I kept thinking, why am I not being told to move today? Because the other two times I was being told to move away, to go ahead and wait. If you're waiting, like you have, there's a special cell phone area now. You can they made it that you can stop there. So this time I wasn't. I was never caught. The guy actually, I used to caught him eye to eye, and he saw me. He never said a word. Same guy I know because within a week I had to go twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I kept thinking, why is this guy taking so long, so long, so long? And uh, whenever I text him, he's not answering or calling him, he's not answering. Then the last minute, I'm just about to text him. And then I see him standing right there. <laughs> so I was trying really hard to reach him telepathically, you know, tell him, to let me know what's happening. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can actually send them a like that. It's actually what I um, did with my, uh, I remember I shared this with you, is I just told my son, because uh, when, he, when he was young, he, after school, he just follow his friends home. And he has a couple of them. So I never know, you know where I need to pick him up because different friends live in a different house. <laughs> so I actually teach him, because he does not have a cell phone when he was young. Uh, yeah. So I, I taught him just when you get to your, your friend's place, just send me like with your mind, just send me a message. Oh. <laughs> so I trained him. <laughs> and you Did tried the right friend? Did it work? That yeah, most of yeah? the time. Yes, not all the time, but most of the time it worked. <laughs> wow. That's neat. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. So this is, um, actually, I have more things I want to cover, but I think I don't want to, I want to actually leave time for the meditation. So let's do the meditation instead of trying to um, cram everything in, in one night. Yep. Okay. 